What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Sean P, the Blunt guy. Ay! And we are back again with another One Piece reaction video. Today, we will be reacting to a video from Sunlight Alliance. And the title of this video is One Piece Moments That Changed My Life. But before I get into that, make sure you guys hit that like button. Also, subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Follow me on Twitch. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And also join the Discord. The links will be below in the description box as well as the link to this video that we will be reacting to. But yeah, so the video is about moments that changed Sunlight Alliance's life. I'm curious what moments we are going to see because there are a lot of great moments that you know, are very impactful in this, in the series. Now I can't predict all the moments, so I'm not going to, I don't want to spend too much time trying to predict what he might uh, say. So let's get into the video. Is it Shanks leaving his straw hat with Luffy, giving him the motivation to reach the top of the pirate world? Is it Robin finding her reason and will to live? Or maybe it's Zoro taking on all the damage Luffy took in battle plus his own and telling Sanji that nothing happened. Today we are going to take a look at some- All dope moments of course, all very impactful moments. You know, especially that Zoro moment with, you know, after the whole Kuma ordeal. Even even going back to uh, when Shanks gave Luffy the straw hat, very impactful. That that right there pretty much kicked off Luffy's journey as far as wanting to become a pirate and wanting to be Pirate King. So these are very impactful moments. You know, now could you say they changed someone's life? Possibly, right? Possibly. Um, let me know in the, let me know in the comments if they what moments impact you, what or what changed your life. You know, or in the chat, let me know. Let's continue. Some of the most impactful moments in One Piece and what made them so special. Make sure you guys stick around to the end for a little surprise. Zoro, Zoro nothing happened. We getting right into the itty gritty. This is probably one of the most memorable moments in the series. Like, I think this moment alone has turned a lot of people into Zoro fans. I've seen people who don't even watch One Piece. They re they reference this moment particularly of why they like a lot of people like Zoro, right? A lot of people, even non One Piece fans, love Zoro, and part of it is because of this moment right here. So if we're talking impact, bruh, this is definitely one of the most impactful moments. Zoro, the swordsman of the Straw Hat Pirates, the future greatest swordsman of all time, is known for having some of the most iconic scenes in not just One Piece history, but anime history. There is a- Hey, I feel like that, 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 that fight with him and Kamazo definitely underrated right there. Definitely underrated. Because later we find out Kamazo was killer. So that was like probably one of the first like supernova fights we get, you know. Especially, especially we got two uh, top tier captains, right? Both of their right hand men going at it. You know, the animation was beautiful, all that. But now I'm looking at Mihawk. Let's continue. A large number of One Piece fans out there who will say that the moment that made them fall in love with the series was during the Baratier. And even though this was a Sanji, I will, I will definitely say that i am one of those fans that to me that is the moment that hooked me you guys know that follow me you guys know um mihawk is my favorite character and partially it's because of this moment his introduction this man split don krieg's ship in half and we really get to see a glimpse of the scale of this series like how big the power scaling can be like there wasn't really a moment before this time where we got a moment like that, right? Like Mihawk was the first to really showcase that. He wasn't the first powerhouse that we've seen. I would probably give that to Shanks. And I don't remember, I don't know if we've seen Gark, but I would I would give it to Shanks. But Shanks didn't really show what he could do when he was introduced. Mihawk showed just a very glimpse of what he's capable of and what this series is capable of as well and it is the moment that hooked me the most 
Like that fight with him when he pulled out the little little steak knife against Zoro. But Zoro was still was still pretty badass as well. So it was just a dope, badass moment for both characters. That's definitely the moment that hooked me as far as a One Piece fan. G focused arc, the introduction to his character, Zoro still managed to steal the show. I am so sorry, Sanji fans. His intense battle with the legendary Mihawk would set the stage for the vast world of One Piece and show mm. fans that the scale of this adventure is much greater and more ambitious than you could even imagine. This exactly. Just what he said. This masterfully crafted scene with Zoro inevitably losing to Mihawk really showed us the qualities within these characters that drive them towards achieving their dreams. Willpower, ambition, respect, fearlessness, companionship. These are some of the many traits and themes of this story, all of them flushed out in a single chapter with masterfully crafted dialogue and a new standard for One Piece that would only be extended upon. Fast forward 13 arcs and over 400 chapters later, and we get a first-hand demonstration of the monstrous resolve Zoro had been carrying with him since that moment. When Zoro and Luffy first met, he considered joining Luffy as a means to an end, but in this moment, Luffy was not just a person he was tagging along with to simply aid in his own endeavors. Luffy's dream had now become a part of Zoro's dream, and only by Luffy reaching the top, only by sticking to their promise, could Zoro- Yeah, man, like, like Zoro said, he said, how could he be the best swordsman ever if he can't even- help his his captain achieve his dream right like that i'm i'm paraphrasing here i'm paraphrasing i can't remember exactly what zoro said but it seems like in order for him to achieve his dream he have to be capable of helping his captain achieve his dream so it kind of coincides with his dream Zoro truly achieved greatness. Somewhere along the journey, Zoro stopped purely fighting for himself and was now fighting for a greater purpose, for his friends. So when Kuma tells Zoro that the only way for Luffy to live is for him to endure all of the damage that Luffy has taken, plus his own, he gladly accepts the challenge. And because of his immense willpower, because of his drive to live, and the promise that he made to Luffy, he takes on the challenge and still comes out on top. Something that Oda does incredibly well is foreshadowing, and I'm not referencing the foreshadowing Oda is often acclaimed for, you know, like planting small hints for reveals hundreds or even a thousand chapters earlier. What I'm referencing is how he creates emotional, complex underlying webs of personality for his characters, and uses Luffy along with the rest of the world to slowly flush them out. He actually makes use of this a lot more often now, and more comfortably as well with characters such as Kaido, Momonosuke, Hiyori, and even Rebecca. But his very first demonstration of this type of character development came from the East Blue Saga. The first time we're introduced to Nami, she expresses how much she despises pirates. Luffy, of course, points out the cracks in her logic simply by demonstrating the kindness through his own actions. What do you think was going through Nami's head when she saw Luffy sit down next to this poor dog who just lost his home and, you know, give him some food for comfort? This- Hey, bro, shout out to Chow Chow. When we was ranking, when we was putting like, 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 flashbacks in the tears you know i i forgot about chow chow for a minute but then when we we put it like in perspective it really made me have to think about how great that flashback was how, how great that little character was a little dog moment broke through a decade of torture, a decade of pain and suffering. One simple action by a random pirate made Nami think that maybe this pirate, the person that I'm inclined to hate, isn't so bad after all. A thought she probably assumed would never even cross her mind. As she continues to travel with them, she begins to forget her troubles. She begins to feel like she finally has a family again. And even though we don't get told this directly, we still get little hints every arc that preceded our long park. Just like with Zoro, she was beginning to see Luffy as not a means to an end, but rather a friend or a comrade. So when she reads Arlong's wanted poster for the first time and ends up leaving the crew, it really left all of us wondering why. When her tragic past is finally revealed and we find out how deep Nami's wounds really are, Luffy is shown not listening to a single word of it. He doesn't- Bro, man, he bringing the feels back, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. If you talking about, you know, the tragic past of Nami and everything, man. He, he he bringing them feels back right here. Man, he might he might he might make a thug cry, man. He might make a thug cry. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me stop. 
know and he doesn't care to know. At Nami's darkest moment, Luffy comes up to her and she fully realizes that the past doesn't matter anymore. Her troubles from yesterday no longer need to be the troubles of her tomorrow because now she had friends that would ensure that no one would ever hurt her again. This scene of Nami on the ground finally giving in and asking for help is why Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and Usopp walking toward Along Park became one of the most impactful scenes in One Piece history. One Robin. thing that is evident when we talk about Robin, Robin was also uh, using Luffy for a means to an end, right? Like when she joined the crew, she even told him, she like, look, you know, I don't got nothing else to do. You already, you defeated my former employee. So I figure I'll just tag along with you guys. When looking at all of these different moments that really define the series is the insane amount of emotional depth behind each of these characters. Their different backstories riddled with tragedy, their motivations, their personal fallacies and preconceived notions due to the horrific conditioning they've been subjected to. These are all things that can be applied to Nico Robin. One of the most intelligent and knowledgeable characters in the series is labeled as a demon all because of what she knows. From the world government's perspective, a perspective that eventually becomes her own, her very existence Instance is a threat to the current oppressive establishment. All Nico Robin has ever wanted is to know the true history of the world, something that in reality should be an easily accessible thing. However, the world government now he, he made a point how like you know how her existence, right? And um, you know, because of what she knows, you know, and, and her ability to read poneglyphs. But like since the last chapter, I wonder how that's gonna change things about the man with the, the burnt face, the burnt scar, you know? Like, how does that change Robin's character at this point? You know, because we know that what she knows, her being the only person up to this point that knows the how to read poneglyphs, now that she may not be that the only person now, you know, with this new reveal, how does that change things for Robin? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious, you know, and we know in that chapter, she seemed pretty interested. So it could be somebody she knows in One Piece is known for making inconvenient parts of history disappear. One of those inconvenient parts being the Void Century. Scattered across the One Piece world are the ancient stones known as poneglyphs, and it is through the deciphering of these poneglyphs that the true history can be uncovered. As a child, Robin learned how to transcribe the ancient text, leaving all of the other scholars on Ohara in awe at the raw talent she possessed as a young archaeologist. Unfortunately, this talent would also prove to be a curse. Not long after learning the ancient language, the world government enacted a buster call on her hometown for getting too close to the truth, killing everybody she knew and loved, including her own mother. She managed to escape with the help of Admiral Aokiji, but from there on out, she was constantly targeted and labeled a demon child, and she was constantly reminded every time she came across someone new that she should have never been born. People who would let her into their homes did so only for the money they would get for turning her in. Over time, she would begin to lose her trust in others and rely on illegal under underground organizations to get by in secrecy. That was until she met Luffy and the Straw Hats, who, like Nami, gave Robin a reason to go on. Robin didn't want to trouble all of her new friends with this burden, so she ended up leaving them. But obviously Luffy would never be okay with that. He would never accept that. So when Robin is about to be executed and she sees her friends come to her aid, willing to challenge the rulers of the world to save her, she finally realizes that her existence wasn't a mistake after all. That it was okay. Bruh, man, all the fills, man. Come on, sunlight. Come on, man. I, I didn't watch this video to be feeling this way, bro. Come on now. But like, but telling the truth, man, it's, this this video, man, this video just seems like a a Luffy tribute or something. Like a, a Luffy appreciation video. Like how Luffy has touched so many lives, right? How he touched Robin's life, how how he touched Nami's life to want to live and live a normal happy life discovering the things she's passionate about with the people she cares about. I would be absolutely insane not to mention the moment that kicked off this entire series. For anime only watchers, you may be a little bit confused, but the first chapter of One Piece was actually Luffy's first flashback. During this backstory, we see Luffy go from an ambitious and naive child to one who learns what it means to truly be a pirate. Even though Luffy learned what it truly I actually started the series with the anime as well. So 
the first episode was when Luffy, when the first episode started with Kobe, I think. I want to say it either started with Nami, Nami and then Kobe, I think. But Kobe was pulling in like a barrel of, of wine or what they thought was wine. And then Luffy was in that barrel and he pops out. Like, I think in the anime, that was the first episode. But in the manga, the first chapter was Romance Dawn when he met Shanks and everything. So, a little different, but, you know. That's why sometimes I'll be having conversations with people. And I'll say, yeah, the first we see of Luffy was him meeting Kobe. But they was like, no, the first one was when he met Shanks in his flashback. And then I had to, I actually went back to that chapter. And I was like, oh, okay, so the anime is is different you know the anime is is pretty or the yeah the anime is pretty much wrong in that sense it's not wrong though it's still canon it's just that's just just not what we first get really means to be a pirate i would argue that there was an even more valuable lesson that he learned during this arc shanks demonstrates to luffy that above all else the one thing that you must always value and protect is your friends so when luffy is taken hostage by the bandits shanks comes to save the day he sacrifices his entire arm to save luffy from being eaten by the sea king and luffy sees firsthand what it truly means to have people by your side luffy has been carrying that very important I mean, but did, did Shanks really have to give up his arm? Like, that, that that's the question I always have. You know, people come up with these reasons. Hey, he was betting on the future. He was sacrificing. The, did he really have to give up his arm? I mean, I guess maybe if he seen something in Luffy and he felt as though making that uh, sacrifice was going to impact Luffy, but I feel as though he could have just saved Luffy and stopped. Luffy would have still wanted to become a pirate and everything just as much as he did after sacrificing his arm. I'm, so I don't know, man. I, I, I feel as though, I feel as though that's questionable. That was a questionable decision by Shanks to sacrifice his arm to a, 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 a sea king that he, that wasn't really strong. Like the sea king itself wasn't a strong sea king because we seen Luffy of, of a weak version of Luffy. Like this was beginning of his journey. Luffy pretty much knock out that same sea King lesson around with him for the entire series and it is because shanks helped luffy become the person he is that so many people flock to luffy's side because they know that when trouble comes to them luffy will always be there to protect them before i get to the final moment i would like to turn things over to our special guest of today's video parvision our vision let's go sunlight shines the brightest in the dark and so your sunlight is the lifeline when you're at your lowest point you asked me what moment in one piece impacted me the most and truthfully there were so many so many times one piece has touched my heart or gave me a perspective that genuinely carried me through some of the most difficult times in my life but the moment i'll share today is when luffy realizes what he has left after marineford in episode 505 and in chapter 590. by this point in the story luffy had lost his crew to the events in sap bro this moment bro i, I ain't gonna lie man like this this moment probably had me like cry the hardest. Like I, I ain't gonna like like there is a lot of sad moments in One Piece that will bring a tear to your eyes, but this moment when you see the despair in in Luffy, right? Like, cause Luffy, he's a unique character in, in a sense, you know. Like he does care about people, but a lot of times stuff doesn't really phase him. Like, it's hard to break his character. It's hard to break him. But this is like the first time we really seen Monkey D. Luffy broken. You know what I'm saying? Broken. And and that's and this is part of the reason why I really appreciate Jinbei's character. And I really love Jinbei's character. Because Jinbei, his character had two very significant moments in the series. And this is one of them when he was the one there when luffy didn't have his crew and he was there to to bring luffy out of that despair by reminding him like look you still have your crew there you still have something you know and then the other moment with jimbei was back in fishman island when luffy needed a transfusion but jimbei was the only person who matched his blood type and but the thing was it was against the law for fishmen and humans to 
have like a blood transfusion. But despite that, Jimbe still was, he was willing, somebody like Jimbe, who's very moralistic as at that, he was willing to break that, that, that rule and that law in order to save Luffy, right? His future captain. That, that was the other touch moment, but this moment right here, man, it, it it kind of it hurt me because it was like, bro, we we watching Luffy pretty much get broken, become a broken man because he lo- lost his brother, bro. Top easily top five saddest moments, and I would probably even put in, I would debate top three personally, but. But due to the global events, he could not return to them or even have the time to try. He was faced with a predicament where he had to overcome not just a mountain, but literally the greatest world powers to save his last living brother, Ace. Luffy sacrificed so much of himself and pushed himself to the brink of death countless times to make it to Ace. And for him to lose him at the last moment was so brutal. This put Luffy in such a severe depression that he lost sight of everything. He lost sight of himself, his future, his present, and his past. The unbreakable man or rubber boy that we came to love that overcame everything in his path was now shattered. His resulting words was that he was too weak. It came down to him blaming himself for not overcoming the ridiculous odds. It was truly so painful to watch. And I think a lot of us can relate to a depression like this. I think a lot of us can relate to a trauma like this, where after countless losses to this extent, it would push you to doubt yourself, to beat yourself up, to blame yourself for the unfairness of the world. As men, we often bottle up these feelings, but we have Luffy's father figure give us the lines that you grow up and become a man by experiencing victory and death, by doing difficult things and shedding tears. It's all right to cry, just overcome it. And another father figure in the series that cemented his place in my heart, trying his best to break Luffy out of the darkness. That was Jimbe. I'm going to paraphrase some of the things he said to make it more related to this context. And obviously this was said in the pirating world and not exactly how he would say it to a loved one. But Jimbe goes on to say, are you blind to everything now? Where's your confidence that you can overcome anything? What happened to that strength that you never doubted? You've now faced countless obstacles that have crushed you and what you believe in. You lost your loved ones who inspired you. A giant wall stands between your eyes and the world. You can't see the way forward right now. Regret and guilt are consuming you. It may be painful now, Luffy, but fight it. Don't dwell on what you've lost. What's gone is gone forever. Try to remember what you still have. And it was in this moment that Luffy remembered his crew, his friends, his family. And that's what really resonated with me, especially growing up. And you see this in our world too. Behind every successful person is a team. Behind most of your role models is a family or a group of friends who help support them. And it doesn't matter how strong you can be as an individual, the ways of the world will find its way to overcome you. Every time I was in the kind of darkness that left me hopeless, it was my wife, family, and friends that I consider family that were what lasted. The strongest man is still weak to illness, and the most responsible person can still be crushed by the weight that they carry. No person is invincible, and the way to overcome that is to surround yourself with amazing people. And not just that, be the amazing person that others would want to surround themselves with. I could continue, but I guess the last thing I'd want to say is we often isolate ourselves in these low points in our lives, but being alone in the dark is a lot scarier than having some form of sunlight to give you solace. And so with that, thank you Sunlight Alliance for giving me the opportunity to share this moment that's so important to me. And that, that was low-key kind of motivational part of vision, bro. Like, that, that, you spoke to me right there, man. You spoke to me, for real, for real. And... I, I wasn't really expecting this moment to even be in this uh, video, honestly. I, I wasn't expecting this moment, but I'm glad I'm glad that it was definitely added, you know, and Parvision really broke it down very well because that was a very relatable moment, you know, because like Parvision said, a lot of us been in very dark places and, you know, in, in times of darkness, you have to remember what you have in life. So it's very relatable. So when you talk about moments that change your life, I think that's like a that's like a top two moment because it was it was something that was very relatable, and it, it was a lesson, a real world lesson that could be learned. Like like that that moment when when it comes to Zoro when he just said like nothing happened, that was a great moment. But I can't say that was a relatable moment. So I can't say it like changed my life. Great moment though, you know, you know, it really changed my life on how I love the series kind of, but this moment though was very relatable 
You know what I'm saying? And it, it it's something when you watch it and you're going through a, a, a dark moment in your life, it can change how, change how you look at things, which in a sense does change one's life. So, yeah, I really appreciate them adding this moment because it was a really great moment in the series and a real relatable moment in the series as well. Uh -oh. To a certain amount of people watching right now, I'm sure putting Gear 5 up there with moments such as Nothing Happened or I Want to Live might come across as a bit of a controversial take. But I'm here to argue that Gear 5th was one of the most important moments in this entire series and one of the most impressive feats of any mangaka ever. And here are my reasons. When it comes to a lot of- I don't, I don't know how impactful it was though. I don't know if I would say it was the most impactful, like as far as- life-changing moment it set a bar don't get me wrong but i don't know i don't know but let's let's hear him out of other shonen anime you often see mangaka write themselves into a bit of a trap when it comes to the abilities of their characters some of the biggest core themes in one piece is freedom liberation and the dream of living a fulfilling and meaningful life gear fifth is not just a transformation that gives luffy a boost in power and a change in appearance it's the ultimate personification of freedom it's the freedom for all those that luffy fights for the freedom to fight in whichever way he chooses and the freedom for oda to experience explore the wackiest ways to draw Luffy without the limitations of reality. It allows him to flush out all of Luffy's real life symbolisms while having it actually make sense. I mean, Luffy literally looks like Zeus holding lightning in this chapter, and that's not even to mention the monkey god moves, him transforming into different animals, the eye popping, and using his enemies as a jump rope, and you know, so much more. In addition to that, this feeling of liberation that comes with Luffy's new form, I don't think extends just to the characters within One Piece. What other transformation in any anime can make nearly everyone fictional or in real life laugh, dance, tap their feet, smile, all while rooting for him to win the battle. What would normally be a serious face-off between mortal enemies and any other medium turns an extremely dark and bleak situation into something that you can't help but laugh and smile at. Just like Luffy makes his crewmates' troubles fade away, he also makes our troubles, if just for a moment, fade away as well. This transformation perfectly embodies everything that Luffy is, and subsequently gives him the thing that he strives for the most, true freedom for himself and all of those he cares about. Gear 5th turns his characteristic into a form of defense for his friends in a way that will never make them worry about being oppressed ever again. I want to know what moment in One Piece was the most impactful for you. You can let me know in the comments or even directly in my Discord server. And also shout out to last week's art challenge winners, Varys and Ariel, who did an amazing job in the Discord server. For those who want another in-depth One Piece video, definitely check this video out right here yeah make sure to give sunlight alliance a like the link to the video will be in the description box i would say i would say this because I, I i really enjoyed the video i would say the zoro moment as far as life changing as far as when we talk about moments that were life changing i would probably say the zoro moment and the gear fifth moment i would probably take off the list they were great moments. I like if this was if this was like a One Piece greatest moments uh, list, I would agree. I would probably I, I could agree with it. But as far as life changing, I thought those those were dope moments and epic moments. But as far as life changing, I don't know if I would consider those because when it comes to Nami and Robin's moment, I feel like there's some lessons to be learned in those. You know, as well as. Uh, especially the moment when after Ace's death and, and Luffy was pretty much broken. I would also include that as well. That was a, cause there is a very uh, major lesson that could be learned in there. I would probably also add the Luffy Jinbei transfusion moment, you know, because that kind of, that, that has a lot of symbolism. You could gain a lesson out of that that could potentially change your life those are the moments i had right those are the moments there's probably some more i could think of let me you guys let me know in the comments what moments would you add to to this list what moments that he mentioned that you would probably take out and you know or or replace what would you replace them with the ones that you would take them take out it's tough there's there's so many great moments to be had make sure you guys hit that like button also subscribe and hit that bell for notifications also, follow me on 
Twitch to catch my live streams. And also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And join the Discord. All of these will be in the description box below. As well as the video to Sunlight Alliance. One Piece moments that changed my life that we pretty much just watched. So make sure you go show him some love on his page. Anyway, y'all, it's your boy Sean P. The Blunt Guy. Now I'm out of here. Peace.